Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. AMD's Gamescom event was full of exciting disclosures. Of course, the 7700 and 7800 XT graphics cards were very interesting indeed, particularly given the reported performance from AMD themselves and the price point. Essentially, they are definitely targeting NVIDIA's mid-range. And there is some actually very intriguing uh, results that have leaked online, which basically confirm this, which we're going to get into in just a moment, as well as some comments from Frank Azer concerning FSR and DLSS. Now, you may recall there was a lot of hubbub just a short while ago that, uh, well, there were basically reports online that uh, AMD were essentially blocking DLSS integration into games, and this just does not seem to be the case, according to Frank Azer from AMD. These comments are a little bit older, they're a few days old now, but they seem to have flown under the radar, so I really wanted to talk about them. Um, but anyway, let's just get straight into the 7700 XT, shall we? Because I think this is really interesting. So first of all, let's begin with the leak itself. This is courtesy of 9550Pro on Twitter. And TLDR, uh, when it comes to Time Spy, this particular graphics card is scoring 17,000 points. Now, how does this compare against other GPUs? Well, it's a little faster than the 6800. Um, not much, a few percent. This does depend upon driver versions. AMD have basically released a lot of driver updates and it's really increased the performance of RDNA 2. And we do not know, unfortunately, as you can see from this GPU screenshot that HXL has posted here, we do not know which driver variant was being tested, um, or sorry, was being used for this testing for the 7700. So it's very possible that newer results, sorry, newer drivers could increase the results. But what this basically means is this card is spanking the 4060 Ti, which backs up official benchmarks, which we're gonna get into in just a second. And it's basically nibbling at the heel of the 4070. Now, the reason this is really interesting as well is, I think it was in June, somewhere around there, I actually put in a video, I don't remember what the video title was, but I did leak some performance numbers of the uh, various N32 cards, and I actually leaked, coincidentally, a Time Spy result of the uh, 7800 X2, and I think it was around 19,000 points from memory that uh, I put out. I had to, uh, I think, round the numbers, but it was around essentially 19,000. So, obviously, if we look at the specifications here between the uh, 7800 and 7700, there is not that much difference. So, I think these numbers are roughly within the kind of range that I would expect here. The a number of... Uh, um, the number of compute units, for example, gets cut from 60 to 54. The bandwidth gets cut a little bit as well. But honestly, this is going to be a very interesting product indeed, especially when you then take that into context of AMD's own numbers. So for example, AMD uh, compared against the 4060 Ti here with the 7700. Do I really need to say this? But uh, yeah, Mamasu's product basically just takes the 4060 Ti puts it over its knee and then just takes a paddle to its ass. The uh, titles, obviously, of note, for example, Cyberpunk, 26%, um, Call of Duty, 31%. This does start to go down a little bit. For example, Forza is only a couple of percent. And you can make an argument. Some of these titles are definitely somewhat biased towards AMD. But ultimately, in my personal opinion, I think this is a relatively good mix of games. And I would say that it's relatively representative of what a lot of gamers are playing. It will be very interesting to see how Starfield, of course, would compare against these cards. I guess we'll know soon enough, right? Um, but anyway, so yeah, uh, these cards, I suspect, are going to be very popular on the market. I'm going to be super Curious to see what the pricing of these actually is like in retail. Again, the MSRP price is basically 50 bucks. However, God knows what's going to happen with AIBs and retail gouging and stuff like that. That's not such a big problem as it was, you know, for example, back in the mining craze. But it's going to be really interesting. I think, honestly, these cards are going to be very cool indeed. But now let's move on to something else which is cool. And that is FSR free. So I just want to quickly mention that I am working on a longer form video on this. Um, there's a lot to go through with FSR free because I'm also kind of doing some stuff on uh, DLSS 3.5 as well. So it's just taking a little bit of time because I was away for a few days as well. So just stuff kind of um, piled up, let's <laughs> just say while I was away. 
Um, so I'm somewhat like running in circles trying to get everything sorted out. But I do want to mention this because there was a really, 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 really big PR storm um, with AMD basically not responding. And uh, if you don't recall, uh, I would heavily suggest you guys do some Googling. But the, the gist is that uh, there were reports online that uh, DLSS integration was essentially being blocked by AMD if it was an AMD-sponsored title. So basically speaking, if the game was, you know, um, powered by AMD, you know, the, you know, and it's FSR being pushed, for example, Starfield, then... NVIDIA, of course, would just be shut out as well as potentially uh, Intel as well with XCSS, which is actually a pretty interesting uh, upscaler in its own right. But the problem was AMD just did not respond. But, um, well, Frank Acer kind of has now, and this is actually during a Gamescom event, uh, basically The Verge managed to catch up with Frank Acer, who is, of course, the gaming chief over there. And they've said quite point blank that they are not restricting Bethesda from including DLSS. He said, and I quote, money absolutely exchanges hands. When we do bundles, we ask them, are you willing to prioritize FSR? But if they ask for DLSS support, we always tell them yes. Bethesda's decision to use FSR is console leverage. If and when Bethesda wants to put DLSS into the game, they have our full support. Now notice... This is not just talking about Starfield slash Bethesda because they say if they ask for DLSS support, we always tell them yes. And obviously that would not really talk that would not really be something like Skyrim, right? So they're talking about, of course, many studios. And I will add, a couple of developers did reach out to me and say that to their understanding, um, AMD do not block DLSS, um, but at that point, it was like, well, AMD aren't saying anything, and there was just, like, no evidence I had, so it was like, it was just kind of like a he said, she said, so I didn't really want to say, well, this is what I'm being told by developers when AMD themselves aren't putting out a comment, it just, yeah, it's just like, well, you don't really know who to believe at that point. But it seems AMD, anyway, at this stage, are essentially saying that they are not blocking DLSS. And honestly, I, I think from a logical standpoint, that would make sense given what they're doing in the market. I will be interested to see if there's any pushback to this from any developers. Again, a couple of people that I've spoken to told me that, to their understanding, AMD does not block it, but obviously one developer or two developers is not necessarily representative of the whole market. So it's kind of like, well, he said, she said at that point. So it's going to be very interesting to see how all of this plays out. Vassar 3 is also seemingly very interesting as a product as well. Um, the fact that it works on consoles is obviously going to be really a big deal. I will be, I mean, this is not a leak, guys, but I'll be very curious to see what happens with something like Starfield on the Xbox uh, with FSR 3 and how, you know, it would be implemented. Because I don't know if that's enough for 60 FPS because my, my theory with Starfield on the Xbox is that it's very CPU uh, bound. So I don't know, like, I, I don't know what's left in the in the tank, so to speak. But it's gonna make it's gonna make gaming on the consoles very interesting with FSR, FSR three. Obviously, it's very difficult to know yet what the quality is like for FSR three versus DLSS. And DLSS three point five also is quite cool because it's got um, essentially RT reconstruction as well. At the end of the day, even if you have a graphics card, which let's just hypothetically say the RTX fifteen ninety or something like that is like two times faster than the 4090. You know, when you start really cranking up visual effects, ray tracing especially, performance can just start to get eaten alive, especially with the proliferation of like 4K high refresh rate screens. So I think upscaling tech is kind of just the direction that the market is going to go, especially of course with consoles as well. I suspect that, you know, the PS5 Pro, the PlayStation 6, whatever the hell Microsoft are going to call the new Xbox, is all going to use upscaling technology. Uh, the rumor is, of course, that the new whatever the hell the new Nintendo consoles are going to be called, it's going to be based on um, 
NVIDIA. I will be very interested to see if that supports DLSS 3 or even 3.5 as well for frame generation on the uh, handheld. And how that's going to work in terms of like power consumption and stuff. Anyway, hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. Take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.